Okay, I, I think we're good. All right, let me introduce you now. Um, Dr. Chuck Talbot is a West Virginia University Associate Professor, A&R Extension Agent for Putnam County, County Program Coordinator, and West Virginia University Garden-Based Learning Coordinator. He graduated from Colorado State University with a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, from Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University with a Master of Science in Dairy Nutrition, and from North Carolina State University with a Doctor of Philosophy in Animal Breeding and Genetics. He'll be telling us about the garden-based learning curriculum he leads, including how and why it was started, and skills documented through the program, and how success is measured. Chuck, it's yours. Good afternoon. I'm excited to tell you about our, our garden-based learning curriculum for elementary schools. Um, this got started for one thing. Our state is unfortunately number one in childhood obesity. And uh, it's also a problem for many of our students uh, because this is a food desert. Many of the, the valleys uh, and mountains or hollers as we call them uh, are 30 and 40 miles away from farmers markets or grocery stores. So the kids really don't have an opportunity to even get good food if they wanted to. So we started a curriculum, garden-based learning uh, in the elementary schools, it's a little different. It's the idea that that the whole school gardens and, and each classroom gardens, not just uh, third grade science class or fifth grade math class. Uh, it is my intention and my hope that uh, the, all the elementary schools in, in uh, West Virginia will one, have, one day have this curriculum. And what makes it uh, so unique is that uh, we use uh, STEM and FOSS techniques uh, in the training, hands-on, uh, and these kids uh, that are gardening are more apt to try uh, the food that they produce if they grow it themselves. And that's what uh, the USDA research has indicated. On our first page here, you can see these are high tunnels. Uh, each one uh, is roughly $8,000. Um, and we can put 14 beds in there so that 14 classes can garden at one time. Most schools that have 250 students or less uh, can accommodate uh, both the spring and fall gardens. We use cool season plants. Uh, as you can see here, they're learning coordinates uh, and everybody uh, has their own square and and uh, they follow the progress and take care of the garden. We have four modules, the planting module. We also have the, the uh, food safety module, uh, pest control module where the students are pest detectives. And uh, we also have a nutrition module, which is uh, really the focus of this program. Okay. Um, well, first of all, we want to encourage students to eat safe and nutritious foods that they grew. Uh, it it's involves the whole schools right now. We have 11 elementary schools uh, that are participating uh, and 200 or 2,600 students from the 11 schools are gardening at least once a semester or twice if it's a smaller school. And uh, We've observed from some of the results that uh, we've seen improvement from math and science skills uh, through uh, this, this program in itself. We talk, uh, first of all, I go into the classrooms. Uh, this would be the, the presentation that I, I, I give this, the uh, teachers and principals uh, that are interested. Um, it's not for everybody. Obviously, everyone needs to participate. So they, uh, if they want this, this uh, grant, which is $14,000, and that will purchase soil, and that will purchase uh, wood for the raised beds, um, as well as the high tunnel, which is roughly 26 by 54 feet, uh, and that accommodates 14 beds well. Uh, we talk about cool season plants. Most of the kids uh, during the summer may grow with, uh, 
warm season plants, they all know corn and tomatoes and squash, but now we're introducing uh, the brassicas and uh, uh, broccoli and cabbage and, and carrots and onions and, and what grows in the cool season plants when they're there. This would be a template that the, each one of the teachers has. This is for a four by eight bed. Um, you can see that Cress uh, uh, has uh, four holes, Kale has four holes, uh, and then we talk about why uh, some plants uh, only four per square and some 16 per square based on the, the canopy and nutrient needs. Uh, but if everybody follows this, they can compare with the other uh, classes and everybody gets to try uh, something uh, that is going to go on the salad bar. Uh, we also have peas at the end with a trellis and uh, the students typically put uh, tongue depressors uh, next to the, the peas that they grow. And so we'll have uh, the longest vine and the most peas uh, uh, most peas on, in the pod and average peas in the pods and, and we can uh, do some math with that. And here's, here are the kids uh, getting ready with their squares. Uh, you can see uh, each one has a, a, a one foot square and uh, where we've used one of the templates on the far right uh, with, with uh, the coordinator uh, showing them uh, that would be for carrots or onions uh, and so each one, and you'll, you'll see that it makes a big difference when it comes time to plant and you've got 32 kids out there. Uh, if, you, if you start them early with these templates, then uh, nobody s sits around and waits. And even the parents that don't know about square foot gardening or spacing or anything can pretty much just follow along with the templates. And this really shows you, you've got about 16 kids uh, all wanting to plant their own squares. They know ahead of time that uh, Betty's going to be planting beets and, and Tim is going to be doing kale. There you can see the, the trellises uh, with the name tags at the end. Uh, typically, I suggest that each classroom uh, take charge of, of, the, uh, of the garden the entire garden uh, for two days. That's a morning shift and the evening shift. And uh, they know basically whether it's going to freeze that night or whether it's going to be hot during the day because uh, uh, you can really kill a garden real quick if you don't get the ventilation in there and uh, it gets up to 80 and 90 degrees. So essentially uh, the students come out, they check for soil moisture uh, typically, the older kids are helping the younger kids, the leader in me, little buddy. Uh, here's the soil Goldilocks soil test, uh, where the, the students learn uh, not too dry, not too wet, just right. Uh, for ventilation, anything uh, over 55 degrees inside, uh, we roll up the sides. We've got chicken wire around the sides to make sure that no animals get in. Uh, we also have done uh, uh, planting potatoes in, uh, in, the, in the garden. Uh, here they are checking for germination and inflorescence, whose flowers, what, who has the longest vine. Uh, and here's at the end of the, the season, uh, the, the two on the, on the right have the longest vines and typically there's a prize for them. Uh, we harvest, right now uh, we're starting to harvest uh, for our fall harvest. We start planting in September and uh, start harvesting now. Uh, you can see the spinach on the right. This was very exciting to harvest 27 pounds of bok choy, but you've really got to make sure you connect with the cafeteria staff. You know? <laughs> I was so proud of this uh, this classroom, but when I when I brought it into the uh, the kitchen staff, uh, they weren't too happy. And if Mama's not happy, nobody's happy, and you really got to keep the kitchen staff happy. Okay, here's weighing and recording each of the students uh, measure from their garden how many 
pounds of lettuce, how many pounds of, uh, of turnips, et cetera. And here is uh, one invoice for uh, a spring harvest from a small elementary school. They harvested uh, 21 pounds of broccoli. They harvested 10 pounds of cabbage, 33 pounds of romaine lettuce, uh, 21 pounds of onions, and 15 pounds of uh, radishes. And when we sold this to the, the, um, oh, the Board of Education, the nutrition director, uh, we got paid the prices of, of what the U.S. Food Service pays, uh, gets for their uh, produce. Uh, but golly, I'll tell you, they're getting uh, something that's one or two days old and it's just full of uh, phytonutrients and, and uh and uh, vitamins and oxygen, oxygen, you know, it's the real deal, it's medicine. And uh, sometimes we can get the pro uh, start uh, from the culinary school to help us. This is one harvest. And, you know, so to date, we've sold over 4,000 pounds of uh, produce to the uh, Board of Education. And this is basically just, uh, discusses the statistics in, in West Virginia of, and the problem uh, these kids are, are facing with obesity. Uh, so we have a nutrition program and, and you can see with the kids on the right, uh, three of the four kids that stayed behind and all licked their plates. There's a, a grade car of how they use their five senses to evaluate whether they liked, in this case, bok choy. Um, and, uh, you know, really surprised us that uh, they liked it so well, they licked the plates. They try it raw and cooked. We used the Junior Master Gardener uh, program, uh, the nutrition program <clears throat> uh, with the report cards, and, and that's the background for, for our nutrition education. We've had uh, plate waste studies uh, where uh, we tried before and after uh, with uh, in the cafeteria serving kale. We measured how much basically was left behind. And uh, after the nutrition education, we improved uh, uh, increased consumption by 14% uh, for uh, those that uh, went through the program. And this was really the eye opener that many of the principals were we're interested in when we did the first year of of, uh, of our garden gardening. We compared uh, the year that they didn't garden with the year that they did garden, and uh, the students improved their math scores by 13 percent and their science scores by 19 percent. And uh, and it really turned some heads. And we went from one school to five schools the next year. So be careful what you wish for. Uh, uh, we don't use uh, compost. We make compost, but we put it in our flower gardens. Uh, it's very important to get parents involved and buy in. Um, and when we start the program, uh, everybody signs a memorandum of understanding uh, that they will do their best to, to uh, make sure that the, the students get engaged with the gardening and they give it a fair shot. That's a $14,000 grant. We don't want them to quit after one or two years. So we make sure that everybody signs on to say that they will, they will follow through with it. And we get a lot of support from uh, the community. Um, we have uh, funding, like I said, <clears throat> from USDA, the Specialty Crop Block Grant. We've got uh, money from the Conservation District, the $14,000. Uh, for one school in each county, a pilot school, uh, and we've had uh, gardening stores help us, and, and uh, uh, it's been a real community effort. But if you're going to um, sell food and serve it in the, ca the, uh, in the cafeteria, you have to make sure that uh, all the teachers and students are aware of the food safety program. And what we have is um, a, a food safety checklist. It's a startup checklist, which uh, if you don't add any new soil or anything or, or new amendments, 
uh, then you don't have anything to do with the, the food safety check or the food startup checklist. But every time you harvest, uh, the teacher or garden coordinator needs to sign this, this checklist on the right. And it basically says that all students have washed their hands before and after the harvest. There's no evidence of animal abuse. Uh, in one year we had, uh, uh, I came home from, uh, from Christmas break and, and uh, there were cats in the high tunnel and they all thought it was Club Med and used the, uh, the raised beds as a kitty litter boxes. And so that's not good. <clears throat> so everybody needs to be aware of food safety. <clears throat> if anyone is sick, then they're not allowed to participate in the harvest and everything else. Uh, basically you have to use clean uh, containers, uh, after you harvest and take it to the kitchen, they need to be cleaned. And this is all based on USDA for farmers, but it's just modified uh, to only include the, the uh, doable things that uh, a school can do. And, and you wouldn't collect uh, water from the rooftop and, or from a well, you're using municipal water. Um, anything, any adults that if you do use a chemical herbicide, uh, which we don't tend to use. We all use organic uh, types of, of uh, pest control um, than adult would do it. Um, and that's basically it. And these are food safety log books that each school has. And anytime uh, that uh, you harvest, you go out and sign off on, on uh, that everything was done as per USDA suits food safety regulations. And here, uh, one of the schools uh, used a, a raised beds from an old school and it was treated with copper arsenic and it had seven times the, the level in the soil of uh, arsenic, safe levels of arsenic. And uh, we had to just tear it up and, um, and start over. And uh, those were the, the feral cats that got into uh, the high tunnel over the winter. And you can see down in the bottom right, uh, we basically, where the cats were, we covered it with black plastic. We, uh, we left it uh, to sterilize for nine months and we planted in uh, 10 inch pots. The kids were very adamant that they didn't want to miss a growing season. And I was excited about that. Here the, the garden coordinator is going over the, the checklist checklist uh, and we also have posters that have uh, wanted signs of the bad bugs um, that, that to be on the out aphids thrips uh, caterpillars and uh, and how to treat them you can see on the left the the uh, we left the, the harvest tore up uh, all the beds that had the high levels of arsenic in it and uh, replanted and we still had a harvest that May. Okay, and we also have a program called Pest Detectives. <clears throat> and uh, with Pest Detectives, uh, the, the, the students basically learn what's normal, and what's not normal, and then to uh, take pictures of it or draw in their journals uh, what they see, what the insect or the mold looks like, uh, we talk about that uh, there are good bugs and there are, are more good bugs than bad bugs and that the good bugs help to control the bad bugs by, in many cases, eating the larvae and the eggs. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'll start with uh, down at the bottom. I'll ask the students what it is and they say, oh, Mr. Chuck, that looks like a pea pod. I said, is it normal? And they say, no, there's something wrong with it, you know, and and so we talk about mold and maybe something uh, that they found in the refrigerator. And then we talk about what causes mold, uh, humidity and temperature. We also use uh, sticky traps uh, to document good bugs and bad bugs and see if we can identify what's uh, in the garden. And I'll, I'll show them uh, this picture of uh, you know, on the top left, uh, does that look like uh, it's normal? No, no, Mr. Chuck. Well, that's, uh, that was, you, uh, 
eaten by leaf beetles and we talk about the types of uh, biting their, their mandibles and whether they make big bites or little bites uh, and stress from uh, uh, water, too much watering or drought or frozen. Uh, you can see the, the mold on the corn and we talk about what causes mold. And these are posters that go into the, the, uh, the uh, high tunnels and the kids can check on this and they know that the, one of the best bugs is the ladybug and, and uh, we talk about her larva and metamorphosis in, in this slide. Um, and they all pretty much know the uh, fourth and fifth graders are the pest detectives. And we talk about cultural control. I said, uh, can, is there a difference in the, in the cabbage in the top? And what do you think is the, the difference? And the thrips have, have used their, their proboscis to, to suck out the sugars and, and uh, chlorophyll and discolor the, the cabbage. And, and, uh, but we could have used a resistant cabbage. So this tells us there's different options besides certainly without spraying. Uh, here's uh, physical control, fly swatters, protection, uh, and on the bottom right is a coffee can that if we see the, the bugs, uh, we empty them then into soapy water, the, the pest detectives do, and they record uh, in their journals what they've observed. Uh, biological control, we've had uh, uh, beneficial uh, tiffia wasps or, or parasitic wasps that have laid eggs in, in uh, caterpillars. That's their specific target. And uh, the picture in the bottom right uh, was from one of the schools that the student uh, found the eggs and, and the caterpillar was dead. And then we talk about chemical control, but soap is also a chemical control, but only um, if we need to use uh, a stronger chemical, um, then we certainly use uh, use it on the weekend or over the summer, uh, and only an adult applies it. These are the uh, wanted posters that go up in the, in the uh, high tunnels um, so that the kids can look and see what the, the caterpillar has, big bites and big mandibles, and they eat the big bites. And uh, you can tell by looking at the leaves that this wasn't done by a small uh, aphid or thrip but by uh, caterpillars. And here's on the back uh, in their, their pest detective book, uh, different ways to control them. Those are the beneficial bugs that go with it. Here's uh, alternaria leaf spot. Does that look normal? No, that's not normal. So what is it? Well, it could be a bacterium, it could be a virus, it could be a mold, a fungus. Okay, and then uh, uh, lessons that we've learned, you must have the buy-in from the, the principals and teachers up front. Uh, master gardeners are a great resource. Extension agents, uh, excellent resource. And if you have oh, just one or two avid gardeners uh, in an elementary school, uh, they can catch on to this, I've noticed, uh, and really take the lead on it. Students get excited about growing their own food are more receptive to trying it, and students learn math, science, and food safety skills. Uh, here is the website uh, that you'll have in this document, and it looks, uh, well, if you click on that, it takes you and has all our resources in there on planting, food safety, pest detective, and nutrition, and that is my email. I'd like to hear your comments on it of uh, what you found or, or any ways uh, that you might improve it. Uh, I am, it's just the best thing I've ever done. Uh, I, you know, I hate to retire until all these schools have uh, these school gardens. And I think uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to entertain them. Does anybody have questions for Chuck? Does anybody join? <laughs> Well, we have a room full here, and, and um, I asked for questions. There's lots of note taking, but uh, no questions right now. Um, I will, Chuck, send them the introductory letter that you sent. Oh, good. Me. 
um, Chuck has provided the introductory level letter that he sends to schools, to principals and superintendents. It has that information, the website, and it has um, about a one page summary of what they do and why they do that. So I will send that to everybody as soon as we have our, our list okay. So that gives you a, a real concise look at what he told you, but none of the personal experiences, only one picture. But Sherry, go. if you have time, how many are in that group that you're talking to? Oh, yeah, you need to know, don't you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. Well, there's 15 right now, but there were a few more earlier. Um, probably, you could probably say 18 to 20, whichever number you want to use. Okay, and uh, do you do evaluation or anything? Of no, not not for this one, no. But no. I'm pretty sure some people will contact you, so you can count that as follow-up. Okay, and then why don't you take them to that website that's listed there, website, uh, if, you have, if you have time. And uh, that has all the resources in it. Okay, so no questions from anyone? The food safety hey, Chuck, checklist. Hey, it's Autumn. Hey, Autumn. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, hey. So, yeah. If you send us that website, actually, the the GBL website, we can post it to our group website along with uh, the presentation, um, and that way people can have access to it all the time. Right. Well, I mean, it's it's in that handout that. Um, okay. In that letter. Uh, okay. I'm on the phone. I can't see anything. So, and, but and yeah, my, we we can include that too. Right. And my email. Uh, and then and, and uh, this last page has the website on it um, so awesome. either one has it so and please uh, you know there's I don't think there's anything that you could do that uh, you know to help our youth to to grow scientists to grow farmers to grow nutritionists uh, to grow horticulturalists we're planting seeds at day one and certainly elementary schools you know I, I taught uh, FFA uh, for a year, and uh, this is the time to start them. Uh, there's okay. such an open book. Chuck, I, ha I do have one question. Yes. Do you do a teacher training? How do you get the teachers the materials so that they can teach their classes, or do you depend on your volunteers to be there for every day that they're in the garden? How does that work? Good question. Um, I... Uh, interested, um, I will go to the, the school and give this presentation uh, a little bit more on the food safety because the kids don't need that much food safety. Um, I will give the presentation and then the next day I will go around to the classrooms and I'll tell the, the students what to expect and we'll talk about uh, the templates and we'll talk about what, does, what do plants need to grow and uh, what's in the high tunnel and what you can expect and, and uh, how to take care of it. Uh, and then I'll come back. Uh, typically, you know, when, when plants are starting to uh, get harvested and I'll, I'll give the uh, pest detective program uh, to fourth and fifth graders so that they can go out there and start looking uh, at uh, some damage and, and some uh, pest indication and then with the harvest we'll help them um, with the harvest and then uh, we usually do that for two plantings and two harvests and then uh, we expect them to be on their own okay it's all in the curriculum and it's all we're we're it'll be a step-by-step -step program that you won't even need uh, us to be there uh, you know, particularly if you have uh, master gardeners or extension agents in your counties. Did that answer your question? It did. Thank you. Yeah, we spend a lot of time uh, to get it started, you know, and then, uh, and, but we've weaned, we, like I said, we have 11 schools uh, and six of them have been in the program for five and, and uh, six years, and uh, the rest are new, and those are the ones that we focus on. Okay. Um, thank
Thank you, Chuck. And like Autumn said, we'll get this website and we'll put it up on our ag literacy part of the um, 4-H organization site so people can see that. And as soon as I get the email list um, updated, I will send out your letter to them. Good. And, and send me the link too, please. All right. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, I hope that helps. And please go, go teach your children well. <laughs> thank you.